fame, fortune, and unbelievable success in the music industry. Garth Brooks, Faith Hill, and Taylor Swift have all achieved these three things. But how did they do it? Was it luck? Or did they all know some incredible secret to making it big? Well, as it turns out, these three music legends did the exact same strange thing when they were beginning their careers. And this one particular thing helped catapult these artists from complete obscurity to massive stardom within just a few short months. But what did they each do to get their big breaks? Did they participate in some sort of secret Illuminati ritual? Did they make an offering to some sort of god? Why is this thing so powerful? And is it possible for other aspiring performers to do to achieve mega success in the music biz? What's happening? Today we're investigating a completely unexpected coincidence that all three of these mega stars have in common. If you enjoy our deep dive today, please give this video a thumbs up to show your support and subscribe to our channel so you don't get left behind. But now without further ado, come on and let's go find out. What, what happened? happened? The Bluebird Cafe There is a tiny venue called the Bluebird Cafe, which is located in a small strip mall located just out of Nashville. You know, between a barber shop and a hair salon. The Bluebird Cafe only seats about 90 people. However, despite its small size, it has played a powerful role in country music history. In fact, what Garth Brooks, Faith Hill, and Taylor Swift all have in common is that they were discovered while performing at this kind of random little hole-in-the-wall venue. So, what's the story behind the Bluebird Cafe? Is it country music's CBGBs? Why isn't this place a household name? Why is the Bluebird Cafe so powerful? Now that you know how important the Bluebird Cafe has been in the careers of some of country music's biggest stars, we have to ask ourselves, what is it that makes this place so special? After all, it has demonstrated an almost magical ability to help talented musicians go from obscurity to getting some serious record deals with amazing labels, eventually leading to worldwide success. Well, let's take a look at the history of the venue to see if we can find some answers. The Bluebird Cafe was founded by Amy Kurland, who opened the cafe in 1982. Kurland originally wanted the Bluebird Cafe to be a gourmet restaurant, but she wanted the guests at that restaurant to be able to listen to music while they ate, so she added that stage. After Kurland opened the cafe, she began to hire local musicians to come and play at the restaurant. What started happening was that at a certain point in the night, the cafe would transform from being a restaurant to more like a club, and the music would get louder and louder as the night got on. One of the musicians that she hired was Kathy Matea. In 1983, Kathy began performing regularly at the Bluebird Cafe. And after just a few months of performing, Kathy landed a record deal. After Kathy landed that record deal, the Bluebird Cafe began to be viewed as a prime place for up and coming musicians to perform in order to get noticed. There are a few factors that led to this being the case. The first is that the cafe is located near the heart of Nashville, and Nashville, of course, is country music's capital of the world. The second is that Amy Kurland picked up on the fact that both musicians and music industry people began to frequent her restaurant. It was building a reputation as a good venue. But Amy was also getting a ton of complaints that the music in the cafe was too loud. If the neighbors had their way, the cafe might never have been. So, Kurland began offering Riders Nights. Riders Nights were a way for up-and-coming musicians to showcase their new music that they had written acoustically. This means there were no electric guitars or basses amps, only acoustic ones. This, of course, reduced the volume inside the cafe, which provided a more intimate setting. It's been said that during writer's nights, you can hear a pin drop at the Bluebird Cafe. During these nights, these performances, the crowd is required to be silent while the musicians perform and can only talk between songs. And before long, writer's nights at the Bluebird Cafe began to become a favorite of talent scouts all around Nashville. Garth Brooks 
Throughout the 1980s, Writer's Nights attracted a wide variety of musicians to the Bluebird Cafe. And well, during one of these nights at the Bluebird, a fresh-faced 26-year-old Garth Brooks showed up at the Bluebird ready to play some of his songs, hoping to get noticed. Now, people who frequented the Bluebird were used to seeing some very talented musicians perform a lot of high-quality material on Writer's Nights. But when this young Garth Brooks took the stage that night, everyone there was absolutely blown away. One of the songs Garth performed was If Tomorrow Never Comes. And if you know that track, not only was the melody of this song extremely moving, but Brooks' voice was incredibly powerful and pure. People in the crowd could not believe the beauty of this music that the young, unknown musician was playing at this cafe. And if you're a Garth fan, you know If Tomorrow Never Comes would go on to become one of the great country music ballads of the age. And it wasn't just locals who found themselves completely awestruck by Brooks' music in that bluebird that night. In fact, several representatives from Capitol Records were in the audience that night. Legend has it that immediately after they heard Brooks perform If Tomorrow Never Comes, they knew they were going to sign him. You see, these men were experts in the music biz, and they knew right away that that song was a major hit. So, once the lights turned off and the show was done, they approached Brooks and asked him to sign with their record label. Well, an ecstatic Garth Brooks immediately agreed, and I guess the rest is history. In his one night stint at the Bluebird Cafe, Garth Brooks did what he set out to do. Get somebody with power in the music business to understand his talent and sign him to a record contract. Faith Hill Several years after Garth Brooks was discovered at the Bluebird Cafe and became famous, lightning would strike twice at this little tiny cafe. However, this time, it was not a lead singer or a primary songwriter who had a date with Destiny. It was a backup singer. Again at a writer's night at the Bluebird, one night in the early 1990s, songwriter Gary Burr was testing out some new material. And he just so happened to bring a beautiful young backup singer with him to help add some incredible vocals to his music. Yep, that singer was Faith Hill. And once the music began, and Gary Burr began performing, the audience's attention quickly began to shift to Faith Hill. This is because, as talented as Gary was, it was Faith Hill's incredible voice that was shocking people, elevating his songs to the next level. Faith accompanied Burr all night, performing brilliant backing vocals on all his tracks. By the end of the night, Faith had convinced many people in the crowd she was a star. And lucky for her, one of those people in the crowd was Martha Sharp, a talent scout for the Warner Reprise Recording Company. Sharp was so impressed with Faith Hill that she quickly offered her a record contract, afraid that another record company might try to swoop in and sign her too. So Faith signed on the dotted line and released her debut album, Take Me As I Am, in 1993. This incredible album features singles like Wild One, Take Me As I Am, and Peace Of My Heart. And yeah, country music fans know the album smashed and went on to sell 3 million copies, making Faith Hill an instant sensation. She was the first female country singer in three decades to hold Billboard's number one spot for four consecutive weeks with Wild One. Faith Hill, you are incredible. And ever since she got that deal, she has never slowed down. Faith Hill continues to dominate the music industry to this day and it all started at the Bluebird Cafe. Taylor Swift Now Taylor Swift is yet another music industry titan who fortune favored at the good old Bluebird Cafe. However, unlike Garth and Faith Hill, Taylor Swift's big break did not come until the new millennium arrived. Thank goodness the Bluebird was still kicking because in 2005, Taylor Swift participated in a country music industry showcase at the Bluebird Cafe. 
Young Swift was just 14 years old when she went to perform at the Bluebird for the first time. Before she began to play, very few people in the crowd expected much from this very young and small girl who wasn't even old enough to drive a car yet. But then she began to play her guitar and sing and everything changed. Not only could Taylor play the guitar very well, she had an incredible voice and the songs she sang were extremely well written. Many people who were there that day had trouble believing such a young person could write songs and perform them like that. But lucky for Taylor, there happened to be a man named Scott Borchetta in the small crowd who absolutely did believe her talent. Borchetta was a DreamWorks record executive who was looking to start his own record label. But before he could start his new business, he needed to find some exciting new talent he could sign and work with to create records. Well, after he heard Taylor Swift play her set at the Bluebird, Borchetta knew he had found exactly what he was looking for. So he made her an offer to sign for his brand new label, Big Machine Records. Taylor became one of the label's very first signings, and she released her debut album, Taylor Swift, in October of 2006. Oh boy, that album went on to sell over 5.8 million copies. And Taylor went on to release an additional five albums with Big Machine Records between 2006 2006 and 2017. These albums included Fearless, Speak Now, Red, 1989, and Reputation. Taylor Swift is currently only 34 years old. However, she has sold over 200 million records. She also holds the record for the solo artist with the highest number of weeks at the top of the Billboard 200 chart with 68. I'm way too excited about it. I need to calm down. Taylor Swift has stacked up an incredible net worth of $1.1 billion. For roughly two decades now, Taylor has been on a ride of success and stardom that very few people will ever experience. She has completely conquered the music world. And to think, it all began back at the tiny Bluebird Cafe. You know, between that barber shop and that hair salon. In addition to Garth Brooks, Faith Hill, and Taylor Swift, Many, many other famous country musicians have also performed at the Bluebird, including Keith Urban, Chris Christopherson, Carol King, Vince Gill, Toby Keith, The Rascal Flats, Cheryl Crow, Stephen Tyler, and many, many more. The Bluebird Cafe in Pop Culture Although the Bluebird Cafe might have helped many stars to become famous, over the years it has also become famous in its own right. In fact, the Bluebird Cafe serves as a prime location on ABC's hit show Nashville. Many important scenes from the show take place at the Bluebird, including performances from some of the stars on the show. Additionally, there is a documentary about the cafe called Bluebird that has been released. The documentary features many stories about the stars who played at the Bluebird and how it impacted their careers. The Bluebird Cafe Today the Bluebird Cafe still serves the same purpose it did back in the 1980s when it was founded, an intimate music club that helps up-and-coming music acts to get discovered. And it primarily features acoustic music. However, due to the incredible amount of stars who got their start there, the cafe has developed a sort of mystical aura about it. There is a power and a magic to this place that continues to exist even today. So who knows who the next up and coming musician will be who gets catapulted into stardom after a good performance at the Bluebird Cafe outside of Nashville. It's only a matter of time before lightning strikes again at this very, very special country music place. All right, that's enough of me. Now we need to hear from you. What do you think about the Bluebird Cafe? Is it special? Have any of you actually been there? Have you seen the 2019 documentary? Well, get in the comments and tell us all things Bluebird Cafe and all things Garth Brooks, Faith Hill, and Taylor Swift. If you enjoyed our country music deep dive today, please giddy on up to that thumbs up icon and show your support. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what?